On the 7th of December 1944, the US 80th Infantry Division was pulled off the front line in northeastern France and placed into a rest area near the city of Saint Avold, following four months of continuous contact with the enemy. However, as welcomed as the rest was, it was unexpectedly cut short when the German army launched their counter-offensive into the Ardennes region of Belgium and Luxembourg on the 16th of December. As part of the Allied response to the offensive, the 80th Division was ordered north into Luxembourg as part of General George Patton's 3rd Army, where it was initially tasked with defending the capital city prior to advancing on the German southern flank on the 22nd of December. By the 5th of January 1945, the 80th had assisted with breaking the encirclement of the 101st Airborne Division at Bastogne and established a bridgehead across the river shore at Hardeshida Grund. It was from this bridgehead that the 1st and 3rd Battalions of the 319th Regiment attacked northwards on the 6th of January, with Ghostdorf being liberated at 1000, followed by Thal four hours later. It was at the latter town that the two battalions established defensive positions in anticipation for potential German counterattacks, the first of which came in on the 7th of January and was followed up by a more determined effort the following morning. This second attack, which was opened by an artillery bombardment at 0530 on the 8th of January, saw the Germans launch a battalion of infantry reinforced by tanks against the American defences at Dahl, with a 319th Regiment's report noting that At 0630, 1st Battalion received enemy infantry pressure from the northeast. 3rd Battalion was attacked from the northwest with infantry and tanks. On 1st Battalion's front, B Company held most of their positions against the German attack, although one outpost, consisting of foxholes occupied by a nine-man infantry squad led by Sergeant Day Turner, was forced to retire from their position to a nearby farm known as Amersturt. During the withdrawal, three members of the squad became wounded, with Private First Class Raymond Moreno and Private First Class Warren Nilchi carrying the three casualties up the snow-covered hill and into the relative safety of the farmhouse. Here, Sergeant Day Turner directed the remaining able-bodied men of his squad into new positions on the second floor, when from out of the tree line just 170 metres away, German infantry appeared. From the farm, the US squad opened fire, causing heavy casualties amongst the exposed German infantry, who not only had the weight of the American fire to contend with, but also had to wade through snow that was, at times, knee-deep. Consequently, the Germans withdrew back to the tree line to regroup, before launching another attack in the early afternoon. Unlike the first, this new assault was coordinated, with the Germans laying down a smoke screen to cover their advance, prior to targeting the farmhouse with both tank and mortar fire. Sadly, it was during this bombardment that one of the US riflemen was killed when a mortar round detonated close to the farmhouse. Unfortunately, no records indicate exactly who this soldier was, although the morning report for B Company documents that five soldiers were killed in action on the 8th of January, including Private Jack Amass Private Albert Simpson Private First Class Dexter Grammer Private Maurice Keller and finally, Private Billy Allams. With his squad now reduced to only eight men, of whom three were wounded, Sergeant Day Turner went from room to room, distributing whatever supplies and ammunition he could to his soldiers, just as German troops could be heard in the farm's courtyard. Such was the effectiveness of the smoke screen and the preliminary bombardment that the German infantry had advanced up the hill and into the farm complex without being spotted by the men of the 80th. Having now reached their objective, the Germans moved to securing the farmhouse, with five German infantrymen kicking down the front door and moving into the first floor but they immediately came under fire from Sergeant Turner, who was positioned at the top of the staircase, looking down towards the entrance. Firing off two rounds of his M1 Garand, the sergeant fatally wounded two of the German soldiers, before experiencing a jam in his rifle as the other three Germans appeared in the doorway. Forced to drop his M1, Sergeant Turner grabbed a nearby oil lamp and hurled it down the staircase, causing it to ignite into flames and forcing the enemy to retreat outside. After several minutes, another group of German troops cautiously advanced back into the building, but were again met by Sergeant Day Turner, who threw a grenade down to the front door, causing this second group to disperse. In the confusion, two of the Germans rushed up the staircase and became involved in hand-to-hand -hand fighting with Sergeant Turner, who, having recovered his Garand, 
bayonet at the two soldiers, picked up one of their MP40s and drove the remaining German soldiers out from the building. Meanwhile, elsewhere on the second floor, the rest of Turner's squad was engaging other German troops who were moving up to the farm, with two of the US infantrymen becoming wounded, thus reducing the US squad to only three men. Rallying the two other riflemen onto him, Sergeant Turner, realising that a lull in the fighting had presided over the area, led them out into the farm's courtyard where they counted a total of 11 enemy killed and found a further 25 German infantrymen, many of whom were wounded, sat up alongside one of the farm walls. All 25 would be taken prisoner of war by Sergeant Turner and his two colleagues, marking the end of the defence of the Amistur farm. <laughs> 